Hi everyone. Today is day 50, 1st of March. Uh, live here on the Gold Coast and it's been flooding Gold Coast, Brisbane, Northern New South Wales. So it's um, it's been pretty uh, pretty wet weather and uh, a lot of people are suffering from it. Uh, luckily where I am, it's all good. Just updating you on uh, my journey with the uh, keto intermittent uh, fasting diet. Um, hasn't been easy and, uh, and I've been frustrated as to why I'm not losing weight, why I'm feeling sluggish, why I'm feeling tired. Every now and then I fall off the wagon but it's not very often and even then it's not like hamburgers and pizzas and chips and all that. And I'm thinking, why is it why is it so hard for me? I don't understand. So I did some research and I found out a couple of things. One, I have Hashimoto's. Already that is an issue with intermittent fasting. I found out from uh, Dr. Berg that uh, if you have Hashimoto's thyroid issues, that going, um, on a real, if you're going on a real low calorie diet, your thyroid gets stressed. And what it does, your, your pituitary gland will talk to your thyroid. And, uh, and then what happens is your metabolism slows down. And uh, so when it slows down, it's not burning any fat. It's storing fat because it's in starvation mode. And because you know, I wanted to do um, 18, uh, 6, and then 36 hours, uh, those sorts of things, um, I'm not burning my, my body well. Not that I ever did the 36 hours, but I was doing 18, uh, 6, and, um, and that's not good. So uh, now I'm doing uh, 16, 8. So I've, I've changed that and I realized that I, I'm not uh, putting myself in starvation mode. But the thing is though, is that um, I find sometimes that I can't eat all, all the food because I feel full, but I'm not putting enough calories uh, in my diet. And also I found out from Dr. Eckberg that there are people who um, have, stubborn, have stubborn fat three categories ones that, that are easy they, they can lose weight just like that others that don't they don't struggle too much and then there's the third group that really find it very challenging and look I'm putting it down to my age I'll be 65 this year uh, Hashimoto's and so I've got all those things um, sort of like against me and then and then today um, I, I bought this book back in 2018, Keto Diet, this magazine, and I've been reading it and I came across this bit here about keto flu. So I'll, um, I'll read it out to you. A common side effect for those new to the ketogenic way of eating is referred to as keto flu. This isn't overly pleasant and symptoms can include headaches, aches and pains, weakness in the body, fatigue, a drop in energy levels and difficulty concentrating, much like the common flu. Uh, they, and it just goes on saying that it, that usually comes in the first week, that sort of thing, and, um, and then it passes. However, for some people it doesn't. If you're struggling, you may need to increase your carb intake and transition more slowly into a keto diet, starting with a more moderate low carb diet and taking it one step at a time. These carbs should come from healthy sources, obviously. I'm not gonna be hoeing into hamburgers and chips and pizzas and pasta. Though I tell you, my father was Italian. We grew up on pasta and I love pasta. And it's been 50 days and I have not eaten pasta once and I'm missing it. I won't, I won't eat it, not at this stage. Once I'm on the Mediterranean diet, I'll have, I'll have pasta again once a week, because uh, that's all I've had, had pasta was once a week. That was enough for me, uh, only, only because I love pasta so much, I can't stop myself from eating it. <laughs> it's funny how um, 
uh, Dr. Mosley's uh, diet uh, and I cooked the meals. I had a beautiful mushroom uh, stroganoff last night and um, I couldn't eat it all. And yet if it was a bowl of pasta, I would eat it all and then want more. Go figure on that one. So I'll continue on. If you are experiencing keto flu, you can help yourself in a few ways. First, make sure that you're eating enough, which obviously I haven't been eating enough. Uh, it might sound obvious, but you need just as many calories as you did before, which, well, you know, I'm doing the, I'm doing the, um, the fast 800 keto diet. So obviously I'm eating uh, less anyway, uh, doing the eight to 900 calories. And, you know, I guess with the, um, with the thyroid issue, that's that's been the bane of my life in this um, in this journey. And uh, so, uh, you know, I need more calories to function, and eating more can help with uh, keto uh, keto flu symptoms. So these calories should mostly come from fat. So I so what, when I read that, I thought, okay, look, um, I'm going to increase uh, my olive oil and my coconut oil. I bought some MTC oil coconut oil and I'll add that more into when I do uh, cooking so it's not going to be about just sticking to the eight nine hundred kilo it's about increasing my fat intake so that I don't compromise my thyroid and then become fatigued lethargic uh, because um, even with um, exercising I've been feeling very tired last uh, Saturday I went to a four-hour meditation resilience um, uh, event unbeknownst to me uh, included two hours of yoga and I tell you I have not been the same since doing that yoga uh, boy that tell you what those two hours of yoga really wiped me out and obviously you know because uh, because um, my, my metabolism has been sluggish because of my diet and all that it just it just exerted all that um, that uh, energy and it just made me more fatigued so uh, so also I made a decision that I'm going to go and see a naturopath I'm, I'm seeing a naturopath to help me through this journey because naturopaths know a lot more about intermittent fasting than doctors do doctors will be good they're just good for medication and if that's your journey that's your choice to go on medication that's fine but it's not mine and I realized that I want to get off these thyroid uh, medications and go on to uh, n uh, alternative um, um, supplements or, or whatever the um, naturopath is going to recommend me take and help me through the intermittent fasting to give me some guidelines because I'm still going to keep to uh, keto because I'm, I'm enjoying it but I'm obviously got to wise up uh, in my situation um, so um, yeah, the keto works, uh, of, of course it does work, but when you have Hashimoto's, it's a whole different ball game. My age, whole different ball game. So um, yeah, so I'm just getting more and more learned. I'm not giving up. Um, I haven't gone under the um, 80 kilos, unfortunately. I'm just, just, I'm just sort of going up, down, up, down, you know, 80, 81, 80, 81. And, uh, and that's frustrating. You know, considering I'm doing the work and it's, and I'm, it's not being paid off, but my body went into starvation mode, and so and that's um, not doing it any uh, any good. So now that I'm becoming uh, more aware, um, I'm hope I'm hoping that within a week I'll be down to maybe 79 kilos, something like that. So um, and because I'm increasing my fat, hopefully I'll get more energy. So um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. So um, bye for now.